Hey everyone, Kat here. Hope you're all doing really well. So, I've just got the November wrap-up for you. And I finished one book just in time, because even though you won't see it for a few days, it is December 1st here. So, as usual, we're going to start with the books that I actually got off of my physical TBR, and then we'll move into all the stuff I read on Kindle. And this month, it, it was a... Um, very much a mixed bag of, you know, good and bad and in between. Unfortunately, we're not starting off strong. I started with Wrong Side of Dead by Kelly Metting, and it, it looks like a really fun urban fantasy, but apparently the way that it is listed in the book, I thought it was first to last. It Nope, it was last to first, and so this was the fourth book in the series. So there is a lot of catching up to do, which is attempted in this. Like, you get lots of random info dumps, but they're not enough to make actual sense of what you missed, just enough to be like, well, here's a clue, and it took several pages. But the, it was really, it was the editing that killed it for me. Of Like, we blew a guy up, and then the next chapter, he was alive, and they were besties after. He got blown up in the middle of an interrogation, because he was former teammate turned to the bad side, which is, you know, half vampire, because she is a, like, let's fight the vampires, you know, supernatural chick, and, like, the halfies are essentially, like, the turned vampires instead of born, cannot be trusted, they are a kill on sight, and she's part of that group, and so kidnapped her old teammate that got turned and was interrogating him to find out who turned him, and he died, but then he was alive and just had a permanent injury. And it just, yeah. The editing in this, just, I, I couldn't do it. I actually ended up DNFing this one. And then, like, we kept the dark going with Death of a Dark Lord by Laurel K. Hamilton. And this is part of the Ravenloft series, which, if you don't know, is an, a, um, not an area. The area is Barovia. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering, like, did, did I say the fantasy one or the actual country that's kind of similar? But Ravenloft is one of the campaigns. It's where we get Lord Strahd, who is, you know, the master guy there and has, you know, the castle and you gotta fight him at the end. And you would think that's what this is about. You'd think he was the Dark Lord. No, this is another case of, well, it was a good book. If it had been, change the title and don't include it in the Ravenloft series, because this had nothing to do with Ravenloft or Lord Strahd. Like, I, I guess our Dark Lord was a magic user, but that title is never used anywhere. So if we ignore the whole, that this has no business being part of this series, and the title is a misnomer. It's actually kind of fun. We start off with, yo, know, we've got this chick that's having visions of somebody, like her brother and one of their teammates and some random dude that's with them, like being murdered by a magic tree that was supposed to have, like, died years ago, which is pretty much the only callback to the whole, yo. Know, D and D Ravenloft area is you do fight this big like magic tree that like stabs people and stuff. That's one of their random. Here you get you know points for this hardcore group quest thing. So we've got that, but basically like the the one girl has visions. Her twin brother is warrior, and they were taken in by you know these members of the Brotherhood. That that one's a healer. That one's good with swords. That one's a mage finder, and he hates all magic. And then our vision girl starts getting really sick, because it turns out, well, it's not just visions. It's straight up, she's got magic, but she doesn't know it, and she's been trying to, like, subconsciously suppress it, so the guy that took her in won't kick her out or kill her, because she's magic, and he hates magic, which we eventually find out why. So, yeah, we get some, like, family drama, some betrayal, and 
a whole like town full of zombies and it's a good time <clears throat> it just shouldn't be called what it is so if you can get your hands on it it's really good because this was initially published in 95 and now good luck finding it like honestly if you look on amazon it, i think it's like 55 bucks used i found this on second sale for like four bucks as part of a buy three like get one sale so i had to because the series is really fun and you do not have to read it in order every book is its own contained thing which is kind of cool but also i want to know more about that and i never will because every book is written by a new author with a whole new plot and new set of characters the only supposed to be constant is the area and the main bad guy so do with that what you will <clears throat> oh and we have a cute visitor that you can't see over here big girl says stop petting me mama is nappy time so she doesn't normally snuggle it's actually it's well past her nap time which is all right I, I woke you up i went to the bathroom you gave me my treat i'm going back to bed this is her post lunch nappies <laughs> she's had a hard day of guarding from you know the mailman and everybody else but we did have a couple of good books off of our tbr as well which is Tim Dorsey, Tropic of Stupid, which is another entry into the Sergey Storm series, which is basically, it, it, I'm not sure if it was him or, uh, Carl, hey, Sagan? Oh. I think I'm thinking of a different author. I, I'm blending two names. But it, one of the Carl dudes that also does the Florida man trope of, it, if it's stupid and, like, you can't believe it, it happened in Florida. And their ringleader this time is Sergey, who is, yeah. It's amazing that he gets to be the ringleader and looks sane compared to his companion who is always um, sniffing things and, and drinking. And is basically, he's just kind of, sort of, sometimes the driver. Sometimes he's just the, you know, along for the ride passenger. But Sergey is very much, he is in love with the history of Florida and just goes on these random adventures that make no sense where he accidentally st stumbles onto the bad guys and offs them <laughs> so like it it's what i could call a reverse murder mystery like we know somebody's going to die we know who's going to do it but we don't know who is going to die or how they are going to go and we know sergey's going to get away with it so, in this one, he's checking out all the Florida parks and trying to find, you know, his missing family. Like, he goes on one of those ancestry sites and sends in the DNA and goes, Hey, I got family around here. We're going on a road trip to meet them. And knowingly, you know, caught up in a web of, Hey, the FBI is also looking for somebody that has DNA within your family. Because we've been looking for this guy forever. It's a cold case. But we have this bit of DNA. Let's see if we can find his family and backtrack. And he gets caught up in it. And then we've got a couple different storylines going. Because that's how these work. But it's just a fun, like, what the heck bumbling maniac. That, it's like, y you shouldn't root for the killer. But in this one, you kind of have to. Because at least the guys that are getting it are, you know. They're intentionally evil. He's just, you know, vigilante and possibly medicated over or under. But there's a whole series of, this is actually the most recent. And you can tell because there's little, you know, it, it doesn't get on full on rants. But there are little nods here and there to current events and political stuff here and there. So do with that what you will. And then the last book that I got off of the TBR bookcase is Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. And this has, like, if you know the Rumpelstiltskin story, you will pick up on it. Because there's little nods here and there. It's mostly at the very end where you go, ah, that is definitely Rumpelstiltskin. But mostly this is a old school, like, settler's time, small town that has been plagued by 
something and of course it's winter like the worst time to be old timey you know log cabin no electricity cut off from the world and we've got they're all living in this small town where everybody knows everybody and of course this neighbor hates that neighbor that neighbor's hooking up with that neighbor kind of drama because nobody can keep your business secret in a town of like a hundred people and so they try to go to the actual city twice a year to get supplies and the last group that went nobody made it back something in the woods killed them all except for one guy that kind of dragged himself like the horse showed up very not happy that that, that part was kind of sad because yeah but they're like there's these silver eyed like magic beast thingies that look like wolves but they're you know ginormous and super fast and nobody can do anything about it and so you know the, our main characters you know dad's like we have to do something like we're not going to survive the winter without the supply run that these guys were making and then neighborhood drama happens that they have to make a oh crap run to the city anyway to save her mom's life so we have teenagers trying to run the household and deal with family drama and because her twin brother is just yeah you're rooting from like can you go out in the woods and try to do this because either you will bring us something back or you won't come back either way it's a win just not a good guy and so we've kind of got some a couple romances we got some backstabbing we got some magic going because it is a fairy tale retelling all the settler drama and then we get nods to it's rumpelstiltskin but it, we got a lot of well i'm the guy i'm supposed to run things yeah but you ran off to hook up with the neighbor's daughter and then got mad when you got caught out about it so you can't be called you know trusted to actually be the man of the house so you're mad that you didn't you didn't want to be a man of the house but you're mad that you don't get to be because now your sister has to do it so there's you get the backstabbing and yeah and oh i think we're about to get a jb attack oh no he just tried to tuck himself in in reverse so yeah this one is very like dark and atmospheric and it's a good time but you got to be in the right mood for it and then the rest were Kindle reads. Like, I also read a uh, Winter of the Wicked by J. L. Vampa, which is the second in the Solstice uh, Sisters trilogy. And this one, well, the first one was Autumn of the Grimoire, which of course takes place in autumn. This one takes place in the winter, and I, I was kind of it it's hit or miss for me on this one. Like parts of it, I really love. Like the second half actually picked up. There's some action. The characters were a little bit more likable, but we get a lot of the, you know, the winter witch. Yeah. And they try to make her more likable towards the end. Like we start off as just, she, yep, she's winter. She's cold hearted. She is just, I'm the eldest sister. Everybody's stupid. Why are we doing things different after 300 years? Just because we've all been miserable for the last 300 years because of doing things this way. It's how it's done. And we slowly get to see, like, how they ended up in their positions and why she is how she is. Doesn't really excuse her behavior. That kind of makes you, like, can y'all just, like, kick her out of the group and just be done with her? But you kind of understand why. Like, some folks get over their trauma. Some folks make it their whole personality. And it will never happen again because I just won't give a damn about anyone. And I'll just treat them all like crap. They can't hurt me if I hurt them first kind of deal. But... Yeah, there, we're still dealing with all the stuff that happened in the first book. Like, it ended on a cliffhanger, and they're dealing with the consequences of that and moving it forward. So, it, it was okay, but this is a trilogy. I read the first two books and decided I was ready for a break from that. So, like, it's urban fantasy. There, There is definitely some romance. There's some family drama. It's magic. It, it is very atmospheric. So if you can stand not liking, like, yo, know, a third of the main characters, like, if you cut her out of it, it's actually a good story. But she is the, the title character, one of the, yo, know, main three. So, yeah. And then I started reading 
the um, Eden Black series. Well, I read the first one a while back and then I was like, oh, I'm going back to this because it left on a really good cliffhanger. So I read the last three as that's all there are right now. It's the Eden Black series is by Luke Richardson and it's the Giza Protocol, Atlantis Agenda, and Titanic Deception were the three that I read, yeah, last month. And of course, like it says, it takes place at Giza. There is a hunt for Atlantis. And then when it comes to Titanic and what all happened on there, th there might have been some deception and lying. And basically what this is, is there's this like secret, you know, cabal that's, yeah, all like Illuminati style that's thousands of years old and is secretly controlling the world. We think we're coming up with stuff, but no. We only learn things and discover things if they allow it. And one group is trying to make the world better through this, and one's like, everybody needs to die for the sake of, like, me having more power. And if I have to kill off my whole family, except for this one that I decided to genetically tweak and adopt, then that's what's gonna freaking happen. But, so, uh, it's all kinds of secrets, and it's, it's action-packed. There's, like, hints of romance. I'm like, are, are y'all going to yet or not? Because there's definitely some going on for, like, this whole series. And it's just all these revelations, you know, hunting these clues, trying to find this, that, the other. And It's an archaeological thriller. They're all currently on Kindle Unlimited. If you like some attitude and constant adventure and getting into fights, it's a freaking good time. Like, I read these three back to back. Just, like, I cannot stop with this one. They're... I don't know what the next one's gonna be, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be another one, so it's just not out yet. And then the last book that I read, that I finished this just in time, like I literally finished it yesterday, was Straight On Till Morning by Liz Braswell, and this is part of the Twisted Disney series of, hey, you know the story of Peter Pan, but you don't know this version, what if we switch something up? Whereas, you know, instead of, like, Peter and Wendy all being chill and he, him coming to find her, no, he has, in this case, he has abandoned his shadow with her for the last four years. And he doesn't remember it. Tinkerbell will not tell him because she hates Wendy because, ugh, big, ugly human Wendy, she's stealing my man. And Wendy is basically being forced to become, like, mother for her brothers. And she's 16 years old or an adult and this era of London and she is absolutely miserable. She hates it. She wants adventure. She wants a life that's not stuck in the house being told to, can't you shut up and sew and find a man? Like, why do you have to like want things and stop writing stories? That seems like you're a child or you need to be in an asylum because you write children's stories about magic and nobody does that except for the people that do that. So they threaten to send her off to Ireland so she can, you know, never write again and learn to grow up. So she trades, you know, Peter Pan's shadow to Hook for, you know, a ride to Neverland to go meet Peter and have adventures. And she has adventures. They ain't always good. Like, you know, we got the murderous mermaids. We've got random, you know, creatures. And then, of course, there is Hook that is perfectly happy to kill her. If he can off Peter Pan and destroy Neverland forever. And then we've got the pirates. that They're pirates. And some of them are, you know, they're bad. Okay, they're all bad, but some are worse than others. And some are actually like, okay, I'm a pirate and I like doing these things. But I'm actually a good guy and you're like an innocent, you know, little child. I'm going to help you out. And we end up getting, kind of getting friends with Tinkerbell and having a good time, so... This one, I never got really, like, full-on attached to any of the characters. Like, this was a solid three stars for me. I enjoyed it, but I don't know what it was. I just could not connect and, like, feel, like, really invested in any of the characters. Even though I kind of get Wendy's thing of, I ain't growing up. I, I don't want to. Real life is boring. Which is why we all read and reality sucks or the people suck or it's all real. And there's, like, laws of physics and stuff. And I want to fly. Without the plane. <laughs> so, it, 
that would I, I really if you're more of a Peter Pan fan, you probably would have enjoyed it more. But it it, it was solid. Like it's on Kindle Unlimited. You can read it. Uh, I wouldn't say not to, but I wouldn't prioritize it over some of the others. So I am excited. There's finally going to be a Merida one coming out next April. So. Hopefully that one comes out better than the Little Mermaid one because I love me some Merida and I've only found one other book about her. So hopefully which one of those sounded really good to you or which one were you going to read that now you're like, nah. Drop a line, let me know how your month was, was and I will see you soon. Bye. Happy reading.